In today's video, we're going to be taking a look at the various different tooling that you can use in JavaScript in 2018. We're going to be comparing those, and then we're going to be discussing whether or not you should actually be using these pieces of kit in your application in the first place. So the first one we're going to be looking at is Angular. Now, Angular is a fully fledged framework. It creates applications that can be used on the browser, on a desktop, but also mobile applications and tablet apps as well. If I go to the features here, you'll see all sorts of various different features, including speed performance, code generation. It has its own command line interface. It's uh, It can be used natively. It can also be used as progressive, so progressive web apps. Um, it has a fantastic templating system. It's got integration into various IDEs, as well as animation and testing using various different tools like Karma, using Jest or other bits and pieces like that. It's a very large, heavyweight framework, and that allows you to do various different things using various different components that have already been created in the framework that allows you to build applications quicker and faster. Now, the next one we're going to be taking a look at is Vue.js. Now, Vue.js is very different from Angular in the sense that it only cares about the Vue layer. It's not actually a fully featured framework like Angular, which is fantastic because not only is it uh, un unopinionated in how it actually does things, which allows you to plop on the Vue.js on top of existing code, which means that you can put this on top of legacy code, change the way the legacy code looks and feels on the front end without tinkering too much with the back end stuff. Whereas with Angular, because it's a full featured framework, you would have to build the application basically from scratch again. So that's that's the, the key difference. This is just a view layer change. This is a view layer change, which means that it, it is far more lightweight compared to Angular. And it, it allows front end developers to just focus on the design, the feel, the user interaction of the front end. After this, we're going to be talking about Ember. Now, Ember is more of a comparison to say Angular because Ember is a framework. And the, this framework has been used by so many different uh, companies, including Microsoft, including Intercom, including Netflix, including Heroku, Skylight, LinkedIn, Square, and Zendesk, and much, much more. This is, they say, at the least, it's for the ambitious web developer. Now, the things that I like about Ember is the way in which they're moving and changing the Ember application uh, which has minimal background breaks. Whereas with perhaps Angular, when they alter and change and improve their framework, they often bring in backwards compatibility breaks because they have to break the system in order to make the system better, improve the system, which in some cases uh, is, is quite painful when having to upgrade from one version to the next version, because you're having to deal with all of these issues that you, you now have because you've upgraded to the next version. And this is a point that I'm going to be making at the end of this video about whether you should be considering uh, these tooling at all. But with Ember though, it, it's moving away from the mustache templating. So it's more of a bracketed system, which is fantastic. Um, it's also moving away from the controllers to be more sort of routing components, which I quite like. It's uh, very popular with the Rails community and it is a very fast and lightweight framework compared to things like Angular. However, with Angular, if you're focusing on mobile applications, then perhaps Angular is a better framework of choice. And talking about mobile applications, let's just take a look at Titanium. Now, Titanium is a JavaScript framework, which is an SDK, essentially, which allows you to create um, cross platform applications in things like iOS, in things like uh, Android and other various mobile platforms. You write the code in, in Titanium. So you write the code once and then you can cross compile those down. And it's a fantastic framework because it allows you to, to build those kind of things 
in a very cheap way, as in you don't have to worry too much about all the things that iOS does over Android does. You, As long as your requirements are that you have these sets of, of features that you need to do in both types of mobile platforms, of all mobile platforms, then you can kind of see this as a halfway house. Some mobile applications don't need to have the, the heavy hand of Xcode or the heavy hand of Java. You can just get away with creating it in Titanium, do it, doing it once, getting a JavaScript developer to do it, and you've got the best of both worlds. Now, the next one we're going to be talking about is React. Now, React is more, I guess, comparable to Vue uh, because this is, well, they tote it as a JavaScript library for building user interfaces. So this just cares with the front end. This just cares with how the, the users are going to be interacting with the front end. And you can make some really lovely front ends using React. It is extremely popular. Perhaps it's not the, the lightest of libraries. Uh, perhaps Vue is a little bit lighter, a little bit faster than React, but it's, it's a fantastic uh, framework to use or library to use, I should say. And um, it's very easy to learn. I find. So React is another one that you could consider. So let's now take a moment and think about whether or not you should actually be dealing with any of these libraries or frameworks. Should you be focusing, spending all of your time studying these kind of things. Now, I've already mentioned that there are issues with backwards compatibility issues when versions change from one to the other, and you have to keep up with that. So that is something that you have to consider. Is your application going to be constantly changing? And is this library or framework constantly going to be changing? And are you constantly going to be chasing the next update? If you're spending all your time maintaining versions of things, then that is a bit problematic. Also, you have to take the consideration of, do I actually need all of the things that these frameworks and tools actually provide? If your application is only simple and it's only basic, then just use native JavaScript. In my opinion, you should try and keep things as simple as possible because once you've kept things nice and simple, your maintenance overhead is far smaller and you have the freedom to do or use whatever you want to do later on in your application. You're not tied in, you're not invested in these frameworks or tools. With Angular, for example, you have to just conform to the way Angular works. Um, you just have to sort of accept the fact that you are now developing using these tools and you have to just conform to the way they do things. So in my opinion, do try and learn as much native JavaScript as you possibly can do and learn what you can do and what you can't do with that. And also things with CSS animations these days are fantastic, much better than perhaps a few years ago. So there are a lot of things that you can do as a front end developer in your native languages. And so the question is, do you really need this? And I try and go on the, the, the side of caution is if you do use one of these tools, then you are invested in one of these tools. But hey, I'm going to be interested to hear what you guys think. If there is any kind of tooling that I've left out here that you would like me to mention in the future, then let me know. If you've considered using one of these tools over another tool, then let me know your thoughts on that. Put your thoughts down in the comments section below. Thanks ever so much for watching. Happy coding, everyone. And I'll see you again next time. Cheers. Bye.